So what exactly is the point of this code? Well, turns are very hard to calibrate because you can't tell easily how many degrees it's turned or how many degrees it's off from your desired angle. And with this code, it actually becomes a lot easier. So this works by using the touch LEDs to tell you how off it is from the desired angle. So first you need to calculate how far off you are. And for this, it's just a simple error calculation where you take your desired angle and subtract what the gyro actually sees. Then you would wait until the function, usually like a turn, is over. And after this, you can have a proper sensing. Um, and the robot says if it's very off, you can set this benchmark to a value of your choice. The touch LED can be red, telling you that you should change the calibration of your turn. And if it's only somewhat bad, you can set it to yellow, another benchmark that you can set. And if it's correct or close enough to it, you can set it to green. So making this code is actually quite simple. First is the setup. You want this code to be always updating throughout your entire autonomous, and for this, you're going to need a second when started block so it runs at the same time as the rest of your code. You will also need a forever loop in there so it runs for the entirety of the code. Though this does mean that you will have to press the X button on the brain every time that your code finishes because the loop will still be running. The next step is to find your error. For this, you're going to need two new variables. One is your desired angle. I'm calling mine heading. And you would change this variable after turns or even add it to the function so it updates accordingly with the degrees that the robot should be seeing on the gyro. The second variable is one to tell you how off you are. You can name this how you'd like, but I'm calling mine gyro delta. And you set this to the heading variable that we made before minus the gyro heading in degrees. So this could give you a positive or a negative answer that you will plug into the if statement. So we're going to then be using two if else statements, one inside of the else of the other. And in these conditions for the if statements, I will be using an operation called absolute value. The function absolute value can be found in the operation section with the word ABS on it. This operation converts any number into a positive number. So 32 would just stay 32, while negative 32 would become positive 32. Now we're going to fill the if statements. The first if statement will compare to see if the absolute value of gyro delta is greater than the red benchmark, which I have set at five, and then it'll make the touch LED red. You can actually do the same with the second if statement, but instead you would use the yellow benchmark, which I have set it to, and then make the touch LED turn yellow instead of red. The reason that you do the largest one, red, first, is so that it will catch anything that should be in red, and yellow would only get what it has to be in yellow, as there is an overlap in the greater than 2 and greater than 5 that you need to account for. If you were to reverse the order, it would never turn red because in else if, if it is caught inside of the first if, it won't even check the other statements, even if they are true. Inside of the second else, you can just make it turn the touch LED green because the else will only catch things lower than our yellow benchmark. If you want, under the first calculation, you can print the values of heading and gyro delta, so if it is off, you can see precisely how much. If you do print these values, at the end you are going to have to clear the brain, so every single time that it prints, it starts on a blank slate.